Singapore's famed conservatism has stirred controversy in other areas too. Homosexuality remains illegal, though gay sex is generally not prosecuted. Sure. Let, let's move on now. We, we, let's move on yeah. from drugs to another aspect yes. of your social policy, and that is the fact that in Singapore, homosexuality is still defined as a criminal act. Now, that's not saving lives, so what on earth is the justification for that? The position in Singapore is that people engaging in gay sex will not be prosecuted, even though there is this old piece of law which makes gay sex amongst males an offence. The Attorney General has confirmed that position, and the Supreme Court has said that the government's position has legal force. Why are we taking this approach? Because a significant proportion of our population the middle ground, as it were, don't want that law repealed. Attitudes are shifting somewhat, but still Singapore government cannot ignore those views. So we have arrived at this sort of messy compromise the last 15 years, and we have taken this path because these issues are difficult. They are not easily settled. And we have made clear LGBTQ plus individuals are entitled to live peacefully without being attacked or threatened. We have, in fact, laws that but protect... But what, what on earth the is the message? From what, is the message sent, what is the message sent to gay men in Singapore that you are not prepared to remove that section 377A of your criminal code, which quite explicitly says that gay sex between men is illegal? That simply encourages, does it not, a culture of shame and homophobia. As I've said... You know, this is a compromise that we have arrived at. This is because of where our society is. And if you believe in a democracy, you've got to take into account where your main ground is. And let's face it, it's not as if others have solved the issue. A Supreme Court judge from the United States suggested a few days ago that court decisions on legality of gay sex and same-sex marriage may have to be reconsidered. So, but so, our approach right. deals with these issues you, in Parliament. And I've said earlier this year that we are relooking at our laws and our laws have to change and keep pace with the times. And well, in a Singaporean way, we are engaging in a white set of consultations to I, try and arrive at mm. some sort of landing. Minister, I'm listening very carefully to your words. They're, they're very interesting. And if I say to you, you say, you know, public mood and public opinion matters. I say to you that one of the leading polling agencies, Ipsos in Singapore, has found, quote, a steady shift in societal attitudes led by younger adult Singaporeans who are more ready to see the country now properly embrace same-sex relationships. So, so if that's the reality, are you saying to me that we can can expect in the near future your government to actually strike off section 377A and make it clear to gay men in Singapore that they can be open about their sexuality with no fear that anybody is going to regard them as criminal. Uh, two points. First of all, the Ipsos survey seems to us a little bit of an outlier in the context of other surveys, internal and public, that we have. At the same time, I did say to you that attitudes are shifting, but I'm not quite sure they are shifting as much as what Ipsos has uh, said. The second point is, I said that we are in deep consultations with stakeholders, including LGBTQ plus community, as well as others, and a system of cabinet responsibility. What we are going to do can only be announced once a decision is reached. I'm in no position to answer that question with finality at this point.